want to talk about personal worth. It's something that often gets overlooked and a lot of stuff out there has an agenda for various reasons and it's not tinfoil stuff, but the, the point on this is you can actually change how things are done, how they're portrayed, etc., etc. It doesn't matter if you're flipping burgers or the CEO of a company. The, the ultimate thing to this is that you can always adapt, change and develop. Now, if you're working in a small company and a lot of these places are always cost cutting, one of the fundamental things you can do is put yourself in a position of high worth to the company, which is to your benefit. Um, an example of that is like when I was doing uh, exhibition carpentry. I also do electronics and LA, um, electrics systems. So the first thing I did was made them aware that I don't just do the um, carpentry, which means that when they were laying people off because the carpentry work is finished, I continued on with the electrics. And then I moved from that into managing people because most people there, because they're contractors, they'll wait because they're on the clock. They're paid by hour, not by um, delivery. They will wait until they're told what to do. So I started getting the blueprints and sketches together and saying, right, lay the floor deck down, do this, do that. Make sure you put the electric um, cables in there, ready to be connected, this sort of stuff. So then it moves from being a contractor for just building the stands, etc., to doing the electrical side as well, to managing everybody on the on the various stands because you've got to understand that a lot of these places have a limited tier of management. They're, they're reliant on people that are capable of running the things for them, which also means when everybody gets laid off because it's the end of the season or whatever, the first people they call up are the ones that can run things because it doesn't matter how small the project is, you're one of the people they can rely on to get whatever needs doing. Um, from your point of view, though, you're making yourself important to them. So financially, you may not get a better hourly rate sometimes, but there is other things in it. The same goes with personal development. If you're flipping burgers and can see no opportunity, find one. There is always opportunity out there. Um, even, I mean, there's a friend I know that does window cleaning. Now, he makes around one and a half thousand pounds a week in his pocket because there is no tax on any of it. Nobody even looks at him. You know, at the end of the day, he just pots around, wandering around with a ladder, doing houses. He doesn't do commercials. And instantly, he's paying zero tax and making quite a good living doing it. Um, there is an opportunity there. There's a lot of people around with, with an aging popula population and also a lot of people would never wash their own windows. So even something like that, even if you're flipping burgers, you, you're probably fine. You can make a better living doing stuff like cleaning windows that nobody wants to do. And then you charge extra for cleaning gutters and other bits and pieces. It all depends where you want to go. I mean, if you're flipping burgers and you want to, it's not monetary, but you want to progress in the company, it may be worth showing the initiative to point in the direction of getting towards management and asking the question, how do I work towards that? Because especially in a lot of these franchisees that are built, franchise or company, they have a development pack for the business on how to get from A to B, what, what they're looking for. And they're often looking for um, management potential because in those businesses, they have a high turnover for staff. People that are aiming for management um, are going to hang around longer. Also helps if you do all the shifts that nobody else wants, the weekends, the early mornings, the, the Friday nights and stuff, because you're making yourself in a position where you're the person they want to keep. So when they're cutting shifts back, they're not going to touch yours very lightly. They're going to be looking at everybody else because you can do a morning shift and an afternoon shift. These other guys will go, ah, oh, well, you know, do we really need 20 staff? We could do with getting rid of, rid of a couple of the Saturday staff, that sort of stuff. The, the, you start to make yourself of a higher value, um, especially if it's a good company where they recognize you're doing all the odd shifts that nobody else wants to do. Um, 
it also means that your flexibility gives you more opportunity as well when people phone in sick. Got a friend here in Tolibeka, started off with I think one or two shifts a week and now pretty much there full time. Why? Because she lives nearby, she's flexible, she puts herself out for the company. Now, there won't be any progression there. There might be an opportunity in management later, but it's quite a small business, so the chances of that are quite slim. But her income potentials increase significantly because she's available and flexible. In a business sense, if you're flipping burgers and you want to progress into something completely different, although I was talking about management there, also recognize that you can train online these days. There's a lot of courses you can do and most companies don't even think about where half these courses come from. There's not a lot of validation that goes on with things like LinkedIn or that anymore. Well, ever with LinkedIn. So doing a lynda.com course and saying, well, I've done a bit of management training, I've managed this, even, you know, especially if you're younger, because it's very difficult to get recognized as being more than a T-boy sometimes. So being able to say, well, I've run shifts, at, like say you worked at a restaurant, I've run shifts at the restaurant, I did the, the, the financial control, dealt with front of house, dealt with customer complaints, da da da, that's management. And then if you tie it up with some of these courses, then you're actually reinforcing the fact that A, you've done management, but B, you understand the training behind it and you've put the effort in to push yourself forward. Now, ultimately, this should be for your benefit. In that case, you're trying to move out of being the burger flipper, maybe into a management role in an office or something else by utilizing what the tools that are available. Um, and that goes for, through pretty much anything. It doesn't matter what company it is or whatever. Um, my progression in Carillion, for example, began with doing the surveys because there was a shortage of people that actually understand the, the data information because very few people have the ability to do the computer side along with doing the analysis on the equipment because you've got heating systems, cooling system, electrical systems, um, general pipe work, fabric, you know, in a sense of windows, doors, everything else, and put an analysis on it all. A lot of people, that is about six or seven skill sets that they don't normally combine. They're separate entities. But as a surveyor and somebody that has actually done most of the jobs, um, I'm able to adapt. I can value things, time frames, everything else, because I've done it all from the ground up. Um, now, within Krillian, Krillian was a company that started off as a engineering company and become a pen-pushing parasite, um, where the top tier is basically disappeared with the cash. But the point being is their reliance on people that just go, yeah, I can do that, I can sort that out. You start off, I, I started off as an external contractor, just doing the odd contract here and there. And then it got to the point where they're trying to feed you with contracts because they don't want you disappearing because they can't replace you. Because what happens is they get some village idiots in that mess it all up. And then they eventually get you to come back when you're available. And that's when you go and redo what they did. And there's a opportunity in doing stuff like that. And that comes from taking all the information on board, recognizing your gaps in your skill sets. For example, I do not do HVAC, heat and ventilation and air conditioning. But it didn't stop me reading up on it. It did not stop me understanding how the systems work and how to analyze and do the equations relating to them, which meant that I understand how a lot of the systems work better than a lot of air conditioning engineers. Um, and I know that from actually having to deal with some of the stuff that some of them have done. Um, but the, the point being is that is realizing there's a gap there with a potential outcome that is to your benefit and progressing. I got to a point where I couldn't progress any further. The next level above that is director. And I'm from the wrong type of background to become a director. Also, the directors were relying on my information, which meant there was no way they would actually want me to progress to their level. So that's what's called the glass ceiling. And at the same time, it suited me anyway. Um, being able to travel, go to the Philippines, live with my wife and my kids, 
travel to the UK, do three months contract and go back when there's a gap and then come back, suits me. I have no issue with that whatsoever. Um, it's just some of the lock-in stuff that come in later, but then I made the decision to call it a day and left Carillion anyway. So the whole point is, use things to your advantage. When it stops becoming an advantage, or there's nothing, no end goal at this, then you need to evaluate if it's worth the effort. Also recognize that loyalty is something between someone and a dog. A loyalty to a business is something that is used against you in many, many ways. Um, I learned that a long time ago. There's very few companies that are loyal these days. Everything's about the bottom line. Everything's about, oh, we're going to have cutbacks, whatever. Because you've got to think about, well, well, my company's loyal. My company's loyal to me. When it comes to cutbacks, did the directors or managers take a cutback or was it that they got rid of some people um, at a lower level? There's your company loyalty. The, most places, they do not take cutbacks for themselves. They just say, we need to get rid of John... John, the uh, maintenance guy, and also uh, Dorian the clean are going to have to drop down at two shifts a week. At no point do they think, you know what, I'll take a couple of hundred, hundreds a week off my salary because I give it to the tax man anyway, which is the way I look at things. And I got into some confused debates on this with people that did not understand the tax system that I gave away a huge amount of money to the tax man every year. And it wasn't beneficial to me or the company for me to work full time. Uh, but anyway, um, it's recognition of finding these things. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what level you're at, what age you're at, what sex you're, male or female. This is why, I, like I said, I find MGTOW is more civil in the sense of recognizing the problem. But instead of focusing a lot of negativity on it, it's focusing and just saying, you know what? And I ain't going to be able to fix this, so there's no point dealing with it. I'll just say men go their own way and just ditch it. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's what a lot of people would advise you from the yes men society. Because yes men will never say no to anything. They just follow a pattern. Because the only thing they're in it for is themselves. The goal is to receive as much money as they can and get out the door ahead of the game. That is it. That is it. This is why you find that when you get a um, reference from a company you've been at for 10, 20 years, it only says the start and end date and no information because they, they'll go, oh, it's, we've got a corporate policy for that. Yes, you do. But at the same time, anybody that's worth their salt and actually has a bit of integrity would put a bit more of effort in if it's a personal reference like I do. It's a separate one. Um, the, the point being is, other companies recognize that the company is like that, but anybody that recognizes the value of somebody who works for them will go the extra mile. Many companies don't. And this is why, like my former, I can't really say this, somebody I was working with before uh, treated somebody as a bit of a twat. Um, not myself, but, but uh, that's another thing uh, for another day. But he then went back to that person after getting made redundant, asking if he could give him a reference and there's no hard feelings. Um, that's, this is the thing. They are self absorbed and just out for themselves. That's the yes men environment. You need to recognize that there is nothing wrong with you focus on some of this stuff and taking the best bits of theirs and recognizing you don't owe these people anything at the same time you can have morals you can have integrity etc but it doesn't involve a policy it involves actually caring about the people around you but recognizing the differences in those people um, the guy I was talking about before um, he, he had done some stuff that is even from poor very poor management side of things but he had the audacity to then ask for a reference because he needed it for other businesses. Um, now, I'm sure he would never ask me for one because there's lots of stuff he did which was illegal. I'd have, to, I'd have to question that. I mean, if you put my resume forward as a contractor, knowing full well that you work for the company that's supposed to guarantee the quality of people, 
and using my resume as a contractor when I actually it's not me actually doing the work I, because I worked for the company I'm not a contractor at the time and I had I was not involved in the work at all it was just that the contractor they were using none of them had any um, accreditation experience knowledge etc so internally they used my resume and some others of the skilled people within the business to promote a third party welcome to Karelian but anyway you need to recognize that a lot of this you're on your own there are certain things you can do because a lot of people get locked into debt and that's one of the first ones that you should deal with but don't lock yourself to that being the only thing here the other side of this is personal development and moving things forward um, the other side of this being is that you should do personal development with a bit of knowledge things like reading audiobooks are good as well I, I listen to um, Napoleon Hill at the moment but the point is there is nothing wrong with listening to these people for a personal development point of view one of the guys I work with out in Dubai he listens to them all the time in the car he listens to stuff relating to business development how to deal with people in meetings etc etc because at the end of the day he's projecting himself now he couldn't get to the next level in the company the same as his friend couldn't because they had one fundamental flaw and I can't say it <laughs> I can't say it but it begins with an R but both of those people work for themselves out in the Middle East um, for other companies they couldn't get to the next tier within Krillian for the, the R reason and I recognize that but as I said, there's a glass roof anyway. There, it wasn't just because of being from different, different ethnic backgrounds, because even white guys don't get those. It's, there was other things at play here, nepotism being one of them. Um, but ultimately, you need to understand that even when you hit something like that, is don't let it grind you down. Do not get absorbed into the hate side of it you're very likely to find it difficult to go around it especially if you're vocal because companies that know this stuff goes on what they fear is things going too public and they do not engage well with giving a personal uh, viewpoint or even if you're going over the facts they do not want to touch it with a barge pole um, what you need to do is just recognize it and maneuver around it if you're never going to be a director of that company yet you believe you have the ability and everything else set yourself up to move to another company the end of the day even in those legal cases and everything else and you know this me too type thing going on there is no way you would be a director even if they instated you you would then feel so awkward you'd actually want to leave the business anyway so there is no point on that side best focus is actually maneuvering yourself into a better position in another company because the best best thing you could do about that is eventually get big enough to come and buy that old company back and remove the people that caused the the issue in the first place which in some cases you could do over time but like I said, you try not to focus on the negative. Focus on the stuff you can do. Focus on the things that can be changed. Focus on your own development and your own future. And recognize that a lot of the stuff that's set up in front of you is trying to limit you. It's trying to direct you into, you're gonna work in this room for the next 20 years or whatever. It's not focused on, come on, next level. Come on, you can you can do this. I mean, without, I, mean they, I can give you some examples because my old, um, my old manager is a prime example because I have a stronger background, more more uh, education behind me and a lot of other things than he has. So when I was joining SIBSI, Chartered Institute, Chartered Institute of Building Services Engineers, he was making sure that he was a level above me by making me telling me I could only apply for this level even though it should have been the other way around. That's how much of a little he was. But the point is, I just recognize, fine, the company's paying for it anyway. But you're on here with Sipsy, but bear in mind, I'm also 
in three other organizations at a higher level. Um, not those petty, it is actually for other reasons. For example, being in the Institute of Asset Management is the fact that I am involved with asset management. It was nothing to do with the company or him. Um, but the point being, this is how petty some of this stuff gets, but you shouldn't get drawn into it. You shouldn't, you just recognize it, push it to one side and move past it. Thanks for watching.